Welcome back. So today we're going to read a story titled, I Am Helen Keller. So let's go ahead and get started. I Am Helen Keller, written by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I Am Helen Keller. When I was little, I was just like you. I love to play, I love my dog, and I love seeing all the bright, beautiful flowers. I also loved copying people. At six months old, I could already say, how do you, how do you yourself? Tea, tea, tea. Did she just ask for tea? How'd she do that? What can I say? There's no stopping her. On the day I turned one, I started walking. Oh, and there was another word I always loved. Wawa, here's your water. Just like any other kid, right? But there's one thing that made me different. When I was 19 months old, I got very sick. The doctor said I wouldn't live. I did live, but the sickness made me blind and deaf. This is how I see the world. Close your eyes and block your ears. I couldn't see anything or hear anything. That's right, nothing. I know it seems scary. It was scary for me too. Back then, people didn't know how to deal with someone who was deaf and blind. My relatives thought I was a monster. You see the way she behaves? She put her hand in my plate of food. Wah, 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 wah. She's trying to find her water. She threw her silverware too. She's so poorly behaved, she shouldn't be here. They were right. I wasn't well behaved. I was extremely frustrated. In my dark world, I couldn't tell if anyone noticed me or cared about me. I couldn't see or hear what I was doing. By the time I was five, I figured out small ways to communicate. To say yes, I nodded my head. For no, I shook it from side to side. To say father, I motioned to put on his glasses. For mother, I rested my hand on my face. For my baby sister, I did this. And when I'd shiver like I was cold, it really meant Helen wants ice cream. But even with those signs, I couldn't get my dog Belle to play with me. I didn't know how to speak, so I couldn't call her. I just wanted to play with my dog. The saddest part was I got used to a dark and silent world. People told my parents to give up on me, that I'd never be good at anything. They didn't listen though. After reading about another blind and deaf girl, my parents found something they hadn't had since I had gotten sick. Hope. This says there are places that teach deaf and blind children. That's what she needs. She needs a teacher. We all do. Everyone needs a teacher. Still, I had no idea what the world was about to bring me. I never had a more important day. I was six years old. From the way my mother was hurrying, I knew something big was coming. I stood on the porch, waiting, feeling the sun on my face. Someone approached. I could feel footsteps. I reached out thinking it was my mother. She pulled me into her arms. Her name was Ann Sullivan. She's the teacher who changed my life. In one of her first lessons, she gave me a toy doll. After letting me play with it, she spelled the word doll in the palm of my hand. D-O-L-L. -L. Can you feel the letters? Doll. I could feel them, but I just didn't know what letters or words were or how they worked. It didn't stop Miss Sullivan. One day we were arguing and she was trying to teach me the word mug and water. I got so upset I took my new doll and smashed it on the ground. I got angry a lot back then. It was so hard for me. I was frustrated. Never losing her patience, my teacher took me outside. At a nearby spout, she put my hand under the running water. In my other hand, she spelled the word W-A-T-E-R, water. Then she spelled it again. W-A-T-E-R, and again, and again, and again, and again. Water, 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 water. You understand, don't you? You understand. I understood. From there, I realized that everything had a name. Every object I touched seemed to burst to life. And now when I wrote words in my teacher's hand, I had someone who could understand me. Mother, dog, table, lamp, father, sister, teacher. When you're learning something new, it's often hard. I started with words. My vocabulary grew fast. 
Eventually, I learned the meaning of the word love. I had given my teacher some flowers, so she spelled into my hand, I love Helen. Confused, I asked her, what is love? It is here, she spelled while tapping at my heart. I was still confused. It was hard to understand something I couldn't touch. It made no sense. Why couldn't my teacher show me love? But then she explained, you can't touch the clouds, but you feel rain and know how happy flowers are to get watered. That's how love is. You can't touch love, but you can feel how happy it makes you. There in that moment, my whole world changed. It was as if there were invisible lines that stretched between me and everyone else in my life. Close your eyes. You can feel it too. Your connection to your family and friends. Still, life was never easy. Without sight, I couldn't see people's faces. Without sound, I couldn't hear their voices. But one of my greatest breakthroughs came when I learned to do what you're doing now. Reading. Read without eyes? How's she going to do that? You read with your fingers. On this cardboard, you feel raised dots. The dots make letters. The letters make words. This is the word for doll. To practice, I'd match each word with the object and make sentences. This was my favorite game. We played it for hours. See if you can find the sentence. Girl is in wardrobe. From there, I started reading real books just like you. The only difference was my books were in braille, which is a series of raised dots that you read with your fingers. Go ahead and try. Move your pointer finger over the dots below. At first, it just feels bumpy, right? You'll get used to it. These dots spell my name, H-E-L-E-N, Helen. Wanna read your name in braille? Here's the alphabet. Run your finger over these letters and now close your eyes. There you go. Now you're reading just like me. To make reading even more fun, my teacher took me outside. She knew I loved feeling the sun on my face and smelling the pine needles. I read my books so many times I wore down the raised dots. There were the Arabian Nights, Robinson Crusoe, and one of my favorites, Little Women. In those pages, I met brave boys and girls who could see and hear. One of Miss Sullivan's best lessons came when she showed me how plants grow. Feel these buds? Some buds open fast, others open slowly. A flower can only bloom if it's watered. When I was nine years old, I wanted to learn how to speak. Even Miss Sullivan was worried about teaching me. She thought I'd get frustrated, but nothing would stop me now. To help me, Miss Sullivan took me to a teacher named Sarah Fuller, who would put my hand on her face to let me feel her tongue and lips as she made each sound. Yes, Helen, feel each sound like the vibrating strings on a piano. In the first hour, I learned the letters M, P, A, S, T, and I. Ma. Now I can call my dog and she'd come to me. At my seventh lesson, I spoke this sentence, the one sentence that I'd repeat over and over. I am not dumb now. As I got older, I didn't just learn to speak English. I learned French and German. For college, I wanted to go to Ratcliffe at Harvard University. Maybe she should wait another year. Deaf and blind people don't go to college. I'm going. I wouldn't argue there's no stopping her. At Harvard, most of the books weren't available in Braille, so Miss Sullivan spelled out many of the textbooks in my hand. That's how much I love learning. And that's how patient and selfless Miss Sullivan was. I became the first deaf and blind person to earn a college degree. I wouldn't be the last. As I grew older, I wrote 12 books and visited 34 countries, but the most important thing I did was make sure that other people with disabilities could get the same education I had. My family had money to hire a private teacher. Not everyone is that lucky. We need to give every person an equal chance. There she is. She sounds so strong. Today, thousands of deaf and blind students enroll in universities thanks to the work Helen did. Riding a horse? How did she do that? That was only the beginning. I didn't just help deaf and blind. I started fighting for social change, to help women vote, to help poor people survive, and to help people who needed it most. She was one of the earliest supporters of the ACLU to fight for free speech. She was also one of the first supporters of the NAACP to help black people get equal rights as well. 
She met every president from Grover Cleveland to Lyndon Johnson. But let's be honest, they met her. Today, the American Foundation for the Blind and Helen Keller International continue to help the blind and hungry. In my life, they said I was different. They said I'd never be normal, but the truth is there's no such thing as a normal life. Every one of us is like a flower that must be watered. Every one of us is full of potential, and every one of us can overcome obstacles. Look at me, hear my words. I may not be able to see, but I have a vision. I may not be able to hear, but I have a voice. Think of your life as a hill that must be climbed. There's no correct path to get to the top. We all zigzag in our own ways. She's the first statue in the U.S. Capitol that's of a child. I really want to know, how do you do all that stuff? I just decided I could. At some point, you'll slip, you'll fall, you'll tumble back down again. But if you get back up and keep climbing, I promise you, you will reach the top. Don't let anything hold you back. Our lives are what we make them. There will always be obstacles. There will always be ways around them. I am Helen Keller, and I won't let anything stop me. Oh, and one last thing. Go say thank you to your teacher who helped you when you needed it most. Here's a quote from Helen Keller. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched, but just felt in the heart. And here is Helen's timeline. And here's a picture of Helen at age eight with her teacher, Ann Sullivan. Here is a picture of Helen with her Boston Terrier. And here is Helen hearing Eleanor Roosevelt by touching her moving lips. And that is the end. What an amazing story this is. Someone who couldn't see or hear, but yet they had so many accomplishments in their life because they kept working hard. In the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., there is a statue of Helen Keller there, and I was able to see it. So here's a picture of it. And what's pretty cool about it is on the bottom, it says one of the quotes that were mentioned here. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And then below that quote, they actually even have it written in braille. So if somebody was blind, they'd be able to read that quote because they would be able to feel it. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this book and I hope you guys enjoyed learning about Helen Keller. And that's it. We'll talk to you later. Bye.